this episode, I become a shepherd in training. As I wrangle lost sheep and prepare to be a midwife. She's so close, but not yet, lah. All right, ladies, rest well. I'm Ming Tan, and I'm a chef. But in this series, I won't be in the kitchen very much. Instead, you ready? Yes. I'll be spending all of my time on farms. No, no, no! Wrong way! Wrong way! Just collapse and pull. I am about to collapse. These are farms run by Singaporeans. Uh, I'm screwing up so much. I'll be slogging it out as a farm hand to find out what it takes to farm food today. I have just traveled 30 hours across the world to Eganville, Canada. Hi, Ming. Hey, nice thank you so you. much for oh, meeting me. Thank you. Here. And this is 45-year-old Wesley Gordon. You ready? Yes. He's living in a small village of 1,200 people on unceded Algonquin Nation territory, where Wesley breeds 300 of these. <laughs> There you go. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, who wants some milk? So this is our main barn, where we keep all our ewes. Ewes? Ewes is female sheep. Okay, female and sheep. Rams are, you know, the male sheep. The male sheep are over there. You can actually see some oh. of them in the field. Why do you keep them separate? So that they don't accidentally breed when I don't want them to. I see. Okay, okay. Yep. My first job at the farm is bottle feeding orphan lambs. Oh, so cute. Whose mothers are either injured, dead, or have rejected them. So, do you know the difference between a lamb and a sheep? Um, lamb is younger sheep. How much younger? Uh, not very familiar. A year and below is considered lamb. Okay. So, in the farm here, we sell both breeding stock and meat. What is breeding stock? So breeding stock is when we sell the sheep to other farmers for them to breed themselves. Ah, okay, for the purposes of breeding. Breeding. Okay. Ah, look at the tails. <coughs> That's what happens when they drink so fast. <coughs> Once milking duties are over, we let the rest of the sheep and lambs out to graze on fresh pastures. But not everyone gets to go out. Not the pregnant ewes. They are on a special diet. They can hear, they can hear the sound of the grain and us stirring. And... Wesley prepared his own grain mix blend that gives the ewes the extra boost they need to fuel their baby's growth and produce milk. Come on, guys! These are 40 ewes slated to give birth this month. The best time to check for signs of labour is when they are distracted with food and won't run away. And so now we're checking the other. So we keep going down and see how much they have developed. Wesley learned how to care for pregnant ewes from online research and the shepherd who sold him his first flock. This one is coming. Her udder is really big, and her vulva is also really big already. Compared to some of this, it's still really skinny. That's like enlarging the so birth that canal can, uh, so that yeah, the, the, right. the, so the, the lamb can come out. out, right? Yeah. Now, Wes, what kind of sheep do you have in your farm, and why do they look like, you know, they have like bits like, of wool coming out? This breed is called Katahdin. It's not really a wool sheep. This is actually hair sheep. It's mainly meant for meat. Now, why would you choose the Katahdin breed for meat? We particularly like sheep or lamb that is a little bit milder. Hair sheep in particular lack lanolin. A wool sheep has a lot of lanolin and, it, you know, it's the oils in the lanolin yeah. that give you that strong flavour. Uh, that strong, kambing, yeah. kambing kind of flavour, you know? The farm also houses two other breeds. Dorper, known for their lean meat, but usually gives birth to only one lamb at a time while the Romanov is a prolific wool sheep breed. 
the largest litter for Romanov was, I think, nine lambs. Nine lambs to yeah. one mother. And so with this breed, we are hoping to make a, a crossbreed that is going to be more prolific. Wesley started looking into crossbreeding in 2020. He started with a Dorper Ram and a Katadin U. The resulting Katadin Dorper U is then mated with a Romanov Ram the following year. His goal is to create a low-maintenance, muscular and prolific tribreed U that he can expand his flock with. This is our pride and joy. It took us three hello. years hello, hello, baby. to create this. Hello, baby. She's got a wonderful coloration, huh? right? And I'm trying to wrap my head around how a Singaporean with very little education in this sort of work would suddenly be into specific breeding of such a specific variety. Eating. Eating. <laughs> That's the main thing why we started the sheep farm. Because we love lamb. I guess that is the culmination of a very Singaporean process, right? Likes to eat, wants to eat more, <laughs> hence make my own food. That's right. <laughs> and having fun along the way. Uh, what are some of the challenges you've had? In the beginning, the challenges was just learning about sheep, learning about their mannerisms, understanding how they eat or what they eat, what we need to do to help them survive. No one teaches you this. You really have to try on your own. With some ewes nearing labour, we need to get the maternity wards ready. There are 40 mothers, and I was expecting to build 40 pens. Uh, we're only going to build four for this um, time round. Yeah, but you have a whole bunch of expected mothers, right? Yeah, they don't stay there for very long. This pen's for mothers who have just given birth. We put them in here, and so that they can actually bond with the babies. It's within that whole first 24 hours, they remember the voice, and they remember um, just the smell. After a day or two, once they're born, they go straight back out to the group. My basic handyman skills served me well here. But just as I was building my second pen... Oh no! The sheep got out! No, 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 no! It seems, uh... Oh, it looks good. Oh, no! No, 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 no! Forty pregnant youths snuck out to the pasture while Wesley and I were building the pens. Go on, go on, go on. Go on, guys, go on. Go OK. On. They followed you in when you shook the bucket. Yeah, they really love grain. They were just it's like a magical thing for them, huh? That's right. Where did you learn this trick from? Three days after we moved in, our neighbours has cows and they broke through the fence and came all over to our farm. My neighbour used a grain bucket to lure them back. After the brief interruption, it's back okay. to work. Oh, no. I quite like this, sir. Huh? OK. That looks kind of steady and solid. We can tie from the front and then we'll we'll work our way systematically. Okay. Perfect. After building the pens, it's time for lunch. No prizes for guessing what's being served. Oh, that smells good. Yeah. Lamb meatballs. The flavour is so mild. I mean, there is that, that lamb flavour, but it's so mild and gentle and sweet. So That's hair sheep for you. Mmm. Mmm. So Wes, why a sheep farm all the way out here in Canada? Well, I used to work for non-profit organizations, but after so many years, even though I was helping people, I didn't feel satisfied. I've always loved being in nature. I've mm. always wanted, you know, to feel like I can see as far as I can see without any buildings. Moving here out in such a remote area is one thing, but setting up a sheep farm in Scotland, a Singaporean's DNA, right? How did you get to that point? Well, we were thinking of vegetables, but to grow vegetables, the equipment you need is, is way too expensive for us to afford. So we thought about livestock because they're the easiest. 
Sheep are inexpensive to care for compared to cows and horses because they are small and require less space and food. When we started this farm, our whole intention was to make sure our animals were well taken care of. The first season, we bought 80 sheep and we, we have grown it to 200 sheep. That's our main count. How did you get people to trust you as a Singaporean farmer here? They do not care who you are because what they want is new blood into the farming community. And I guess they evaluate you based on your skills as a farmer. Yeah, your skills as a farmer is how much you produce. For us, in a humane, sustainable way, that's what I evaluate myself. I don't wait for people to evaluate me. Sheep duties aside, there are also farm maintenance chores to be done. Like repairing damaged fences. Now I just need to push it back up. So we have to go around the fields to look for more. Big field. It oh, okay, is. Okay. Not just one field, but a few. But our fence fixing duty was soon interrupted. A sheep had escaped through a hole in the fence Yo. and was on the other side. Yeah. Yo. Once again, Wesley yeah. uses his magic bucket to lead the stray sheep back inside the fence. But the force of the bucket was too strong. So, a bit chaotic right now. All the sheep have come over because Wesley is trying to attract one lost sheep. Move away. Let's go. Let's go. No, no, no. Wrong, wrong way. Wrong way. Wrong way, guys. This way. Over there. Let's go that way, okay? Woo! It's a good thing Wesley has not lost any sheep under his watch. This way! Let's go! That's the sheep that was out there in the field. Ooh, were the knocky ones? Yeah. Knocky fella. With the herd reunited, it's time to mend the hole. Take your side from one end, and I'll take my side from that end, and kind of pull it up. It's secure into one of the holes. Yeah. How common is this, uh, Wes? It's not always that common, but we never really checked our fence this year, really. They see it, there's a lot of grass here compared to here. Almost like the grass is greener on the other side. They want to try and get over. That's good. Thank you, Ming. So, Wesley, this is as good a point as Eddie to ask. Is the grass greener on the other side? I cannot imagine uh, my life not being on a farm now. It's definitely greener here. Just as we're done with our farm chores, it's also time for the grazing sheep to hit home. Is that a pipe piper? So, it is now 11.15 at night and um, we're tired, it's been a long day, but uh, we had to go and check on some lambs that are potentially lambing. Wesley monitors the pregnant ewes periodically at night because this is when they usually go into labour. He's like the lamb midwife, helping with delivery and getting mother and baby to bond. She's so close, but not yet lah. No luck with any newborn lambs tonight. I have to come back again tomorrow night and the next night. It's part of the waiting game lah. Alright ladies, rest well. <coughs> this morning, these four old ewes are on the way to the auction barn. Livestock farmers mainly sell to dealers and distributors at auctions. 
Wesley foresees the four ewes will be culled and made into pet food. How much did the sheep go for? One was about 75 cents per pound. The other three was about 60 cents per pound. Uh, it's a little bit of the lower side. I expected it more, but, you know, what can I do? Auction sales make up 30% of his farm's revenue, while direct sale of meat to consumers makes up about 20%. The bulk of his revenue comes from selling his lambs as breeding stock to other farmers. But there's something unpleasant we must first do. It's like a border separation. Our first chore for the day, load up on two weeks of hay for the ewe sheep after the lambs have been weaned. Okay, Ming, come. I'll show you how to drive this skid steer so that we can unload the hay. Did it take you a while to learn how to do this? It's actually pretty easy, like it's two joysticks. Up and down, go back, go forward. Left, right, okay? What you're going to do is carry that bill over to the other side. OK, sure. All right, here goes nothing. Yeah. Ready, yeah? Got to lift it up a little bit more and straighten it out. A little bit higher. Oh, dear Lord. Down. Slowly. I thought I was making good progress, but it's not fast enough. You have been doing really well, but I think it's a little bit too long. I'm going to take over. Okay, okay, okay. After unloading the hay, it's time for a very unpleasant task. We need. We are going to be sectioning the mothers and the babies over in one small corner, and we are going to start grabbing the babies and putting them um, over the fence. Oh, that sounds dramatic. It is a little bit dramatic, but we need to do it because they are almost old enough to breed. If we leave the mothers and the babies together, the babies breed the mothers. Let's go! Move! Guys, come on! Go! Ah! Ah! Looking for our babies. The babies are looking for their mothers. It's like a border separation. Well, they're gonna cry like this all night long. How long do you think this will last? It's gonna be a good 24 hours. Hopefully within 36. I've heard it go on for 48. Weaning the lambs marks the start of sales season at Fairside Farm. OK, 255, confirm. Wesley has shortlisted these ram lambs as breeding stock for his first customer of the season. We have to worm the lambs to prevent parasites and trim their hooves before the customer arrives. OK, you can trim a little bit. But there's not, there's not much to trim. Hello. Hi, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. I see that you've, you've picked all the brown ones, which is good, because I'm trying to make more, more colors in my socks. That's right. Yeah. I think I like that one, yeah, 280. Man, how did you get to know about Wesley? Um, so I've been looking into getting into to homestead farming for a few years, and I researching different sheep breeds. I actually found an ad that they had placed. So I reached out and contacted them, and we just they answered all my questions even before I was ready to make a purchase, and just everything felt really good. Still today, like if we have questions, they're the people we go to ask. It's my final day on the farm, and I am just in time for Canada Day. 
Wesley is hosting a barbecue dinner in celebration. It's a huge deal here in Canada. It's because it's like our Singapore National Day. It's impactful to me because they accept me. It's like um, coming to a new country and and you feel accepted. That's That means a lot to me. After a week of firsts, I'm finally in my comfort zone as I bring some Asian flavours to remind Wesley of home. How many years has it been since you've been away from Singapore? Well, since I was 16, I came back for NS after I finished high school here, then came back to university. Do you think you've grown since? Uh, definitely, yeah. It's a different way of life. Some uh, family members think I should be doing other work instead of this. But what a lot of people do not understand is money is not everything. Lah. Here, I have something that I will never have back home. The nature, the peace and quiet, all this I will never find. And that money cannot buy. Lah. But I have something for you from Singapore that you will definitely not find here. Nasi lemak sambal. <laughs> my favourite. Oh my god, we cannot get this here, man. Thank you so much. I've got a feast planned for the night. Curry, nasi lemak and rendang. So this is Pauline. Pauline used to live here. We are basically the first owners um, um, after her family. My mother and father would be so delighted to know that you are doing such a grand oh. job. And the land is being so well used. So you are guardians of this land and you're doing <laughs> a you. marvelous thank job. You. Hi, thank you for your yeah. patience. Oh. This looks amazing. Oh, oh my goodness. God, rendang, I've not had this in so long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like drooling. Dig in, this is a little bit of love. Thank you. From us in Singapore wow. to you guys. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. As for the pregnant mothers, one gave birth the morning we left, and the rest followed in the weeks to come.